And the title of my message tonight, if you're taking no notes, is the Cyrus anointing. The Cyrus anointing. Look at that person next to you and say, the Cyrus anointing. There's a very interesting, unique person within history. His name is Cyrus, and the role he played within history is, is profound because he was a Persian king. He wasn't a Jewish king. He wasn't of the nation of God, the people of God. He was a Persian king, yet God used this Persian king to come in and establish his kingdom and establish God's will and to come in and bless God's people. He was a man of incredible victory. He had great conquerors. As a matter of fact, many people call him Cyrus the Great. He was a great conqueror. As a matter of fact, a lot of people were amazed at some of the victories he had, he had won because he had no business winning some of the battles he won. There was a unique favor upon Cyrus. There was a unique ability for him to go in and conquer, go in and obtain wealth. And he walked in something that was beyond him, which later we're going to find out that God does things to set something forward that we don't understand, to set things into motion to prepare his kingdom for breakthrough. See, some of you don't know it right now, but God is setting things in motion to prepare you for victory. God is setting things in motion for his will to be done. And you may not see it right now. You may not understand it right now. But God is setting things in motion for you to be blessed, for you to be victorious. Can I get an amen? But what we see in Cyrus's life is an incredible moment. Where Cyrus, who was not a godly king, he was not a part of God's incredible people, but yet he was prophesied over. He received a prophetic word a hundred years before he came into power. Even before he was born, there was a prophetic word that came toward Cyrus on how God would use him. Here in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, this is a hundred years before Cyrus came into power. When this prophetic word was given by the mouth of Isaiah, Cyrus wasn't even born yet. You want to talk about an accurate prophetic word. That's scary. Now listen to this. This is awesome. A hundred years before Cyrus even came on the scene, there was a prophetic word about him. Do you know what that means? That means that God knows some things. Can I tell you something? What we need now is not just a good idea. We need a revelation. What we need in our lives right now is not just a glimmer of hope. What we need in our lives right now is a word from God. I think too often we try and encourage ourselves, and the Bible tells us to actually encourage ourselves in the Lord. But I I'm telling you right now, there's a word that God wants to release. There's a revelation that God wants to release. And friends, if you're just if, if you just position yourself to hear the word of the Lord, He will speak forth a word into existence. I love how the how the word says this that He actually calls Cyrus forth. The prophet, in that moment, a hundred years before Cyrus stepped on the scene, actually called Cyrus forth. Friends, i got to tell you something. If you can get this in your spirit tonight, if you can leave with anything in your spirit and go, hey man, i got a word to hold on to, we've got to learn, and we're going to talk about this in a moment, we've got to learn how to start declaring things forth. Oh, but pastor, I haven't seen anything. Children of Israel waited. As a matter of fact, there was a moment where Daniel had to wait 70 years for a word 
from the prophet Jeremiah, 70 years that the prophet Jeremiah said that you would be in a certain position, and he had to wait 70 years for this thing to come forth. We've got to learn how to be tenacious in our declaration. You say, well, Pastor, that's, that's hyper-spiritual, man. That's crazy. Listen, stop. Just for a moment, I want you to hear this. You can declare and nothing happen. And we get frustrated. We get disappointed, don't we? At times we even go through a season where we see the complete opposite happen. But the people of God received a word from the Lord and they held on to it and they used it and they declared it. I want us to look at this because I want us to understand that there is a Cyrus anointing. Everybody say that with me one more time. A what? Cyrus anointing. Now, I'm not talking about a particular anointing that, uh, that is associated with the person Cyrus as far as like it's his particular anointing. But there's an anointing that he walked in that we attribute to him and his relationship to God, his relationship to what he did, everything that happened in his life. So we call it the Cyrus anointing. Everybody understand? So it is an anointing. The reason I say that and want to clarify that is because it is an anointing that is available for today because it comes from the Holy Spirit. It does not come from Cyrus. We don't have to go lay on Cyrus's grave. We're not grave suckers. Somebody look at me. We are not grave suckers. We don't go lay on graves of dead people and try and suck out their anointing because the anointing doesn't come from their flesh. The anointing comes from the Holy Spirit. So we're not looking to go to Cyrus's grave and try and get a Cyrus anointing. It's anointing that comes from the Holy Spirit that is available for you today. Everybody understand that? And this is what I want to talk about in the Cyrus anointing tonight is this. When we break down Isaiah 45, and I want us to look at this, this passage, and let's unpack this passage. Will you guys unpack this with me just for a moment? I want you to see a few incredible points that we can hold on tonight to understand what was going on in Cyrus's life, who he was, and how to function in that Cyrus anointing. Number one... It says this of Cyrus, that is what the Lord says to his anointed. This is what the Lord says to his what? Anointed. To his what? So God actually called Cyrus anointed. Now this is a man that did not serve God. He was not a part of the kingdom of God. He wasn't a child of God. He was a Persian king, yet God anointed him for a purpose. That word anointing is very important because it is a word that gives us an understanding to be chosen, number one, to be chosen by God. Everybody say chosen by God and used by God. For me, the best way to explain the anointing is not, now we talk about the anointing all the time, of, of the, it's the work of the person of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But for me, the best way to explain the anointing is the anointing is being chosen by God and used by God. Because a lot of us, we want to use the anointing instead of the anointing using us. I don't know about you, but I, I, I actually struggle with that sometimes. I just want to use the anointing instead of the anointing use me. So it's being chosen by God and being used by God. Isn't it awesome how God would use a Persian king to set his people free? Isn't it awesome how God would use a Persian king to bring deliverance to his people? He says this. Oh man, this is awesome. See, the, the anointing is broken down in two, two ways. What is it? It's being chosen by God, right? Everybody say chosen by God. But listen to this. I love this phrase. Man, this is incredible. Are you guys seeing this? Watch this. Watch this. Used by God whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations. Now, I want you to get this picture. 
Because this picture, through this prophetic word, on 100 years before Cyrus even came into power, says that I'm going to use this man and I'm going to take his hand and I'm going to do mighty things through him. Don't you think it's incredible that God could actually use an ungodly man for God's work? That means that God supersedes sometimes our own ability, even our own philosophy of life and ideology, ideologies. God supersedes all of that. What an incredible picture that God would come upon Cyrus and take his hand. Can I tell you something? If God can do that for the unrighteous and the ungodly, don't you think that God could take your hand and begin to use you in a powerful way? Man, I don't know about you, but I got so excited when I read this because I said, man, if God can use Cyrus, God can use me. If God can take the right hand of Cyrus and anoint it to, to do battle and to wage war, God can use me and my righteous hand. Amen? Come on, somebody. Man, this is the point where you just get excited because like, woo, God's going to do something good in me. I love this. He says, not only has he anointed him, he was chosen by God and used by God, but all of a sudden all these things begin to get declared. I will give you impossible victories. Impossible victories. I love how, how the scripture talks about this idea of iron bars, bronze gates. Well, these bronze gates and iron bars represented a stronghold that was, that was pretty much impenetrable. It, was, it wasn't one of those things where it was this easy thing, I'm just going to walk in unguarded gates. They were guarded gates. And that God would give Cyrus victory over impossible odds. God would give Cyrus victory in situations that it wasn't normal to have victory in, against armies that it seemed daunting. Have, have you guys ever faced an enemy that it just seemed impossible to get victory? But yet here, Cyrus receives the word of the Lord that he was going to have victory over impossible enemies. Can I tell you something right now? Hear the word of the Lord. Some of you have in store impossible victories. That God is making a way where there seems to be no way. And the bars are shut, the gates are shut, and those gates and bars seem impenetrable, but God is going to move in a mighty way, and he's going to kick open the doors. Come on, somebody. He's going to knock down the gates. Come on, somebody. He opens a way where there seems to be no way. Whew. Listen to this one. You ready for this? As we keep going. Chapter 45. Hidden treasures. Now, I love this. Hidden treasures and in secret places. Store for you in secret places. Now, this is what's incredible to me. Because when you begin to understand what, what it means to have hidden treasures in secret places. That means two things. Number one, you stumble upon something that you would never normally stumble upon because you found yourself in a certain place at a certain time and it just so happened. Anybody here ever found a $100 bill in the sand at the beach? I don't like you. No, just joking. <laughs> I've always wanted one. I even, man, I'm telling you, there are even moments where I had a metal detector and I tried to go find something at the beach. And I still couldn't find it. And then all of a sudden, I went over, I went over that part, the portion of the beach with a metal detector, right? And pretty soon I'm looking down and there's somebody, oh, I got a hundred dollar bill. I'm like, where's my hundred dollar bill detector? Just stumbled upon it in a in a massive amount of sand on a beach miles long. You stumble upon this $100 bill. It just so happens to be there. And this is what's incredible. It's either number one, that it's by happenstance, or it's by divine direction. To find something that is in secret places, hidden places, hidden treasures, means that it has to be a divine order. A divine direction that comes. It either means it's by happenstance or God led you there or God revealed something to you. Man. 
You know what that means? See, if this is, this is, the reason I'm, I'm screaming so loud is, number one, I'm Italian. Number two, I'm still young yet. And number three, this makes me excited. Can I tell you why this makes me excited? Because this, this is the revelation I get. I can, either, I can either hope that I stumble upon success and stumble upon some treasure, or I can depend upon God knowing that there is a divine power that leads me and guides me to hidden treasures and success. That if I'm just led by God, I don't have to worry about hopefully I got some good luck. No, I don't need luck. I'm blessed. You might find a $100 bill in the sand by luck, but can I tell you something? I don't need that $100, in the bill, $100 bill in the sand because God is leading me to a treasure that only he can find, that only he knows where it's at. And at the right time, at the right moment, beyond happenstance, God is going to lead me and guide me to increase to prosperity, to blessing. You say, well, pastor, how come it hasn't happened to me? Because sometimes we depend more upon our luck than his voice. Isn't it amazing? Cyrus's life, the word of the Lord came forth that he would actually find hidden treasures. That God would reveal to him. How many of you guys need some revelation of hidden treasures? You know what I believe? That God can reveal to you. Now, let me tell you something about finances. Finances are a funny little thing. Can I tell you why? In 1990, hardly anybody had a computer. No one in their right mind, no one in their right mind would say that one day computers would be worth billions and billions and billions and that no one in their right mind would say that Steve Jobs would create this tiny little pod that you put in your pocket and be worth billions of dollars. See, what happens is you get a revelation and there's a need and things begin to come together. Some of you are one idea away. Some of you are one idea away from breakthrough. But don't depend upon luck. You have to depend upon the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Listen to his voice because he'll tell you. This is what God told Cyrus that he would do for him. I will lead you. I will guide you. I'll lead you to that cave that someone hasn't been in for years and years. And it just so happened that years before, somebody left some gold in that cave and you discovered it. Okay, let, me, let me tell you something. Right now, Pastor Daniel told me a story about a couple in the church that got a prophetic word. Guess what they work on? They work on gold. They're, 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 they're diggers. They have some mines. And that mine was dry. But it just so happened the right time, the right person, the right leading of the Holy Spirit, guess what? Oh, man, they're multimillionaires now. One strike. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know I'm, I know I'm belaboring this point, but if I can get this in your spirit, some of you will walk away here not going, oh, well, I just happened looking at the parking lot going, oh, I hope I find a $20 bill because I need gas in my car. But instead going, Lord, I'm following you. Lord, where do you want me to go? Because I know you have resource for me. I know you have provision for me. I know you got a, a divine appointment for me. I know you got favor for me. So I'm going to walk in this. You want me to go right? All right, I'll go right. You want me to go left? Yes, I'll go left. You want me to talk to that person? Yes, I'll talk to him. Can you imagine if we all did that? What kind of hidden treasures you could find? Wow. Can I just reiterate this again? If God can release this upon an ungodly king, what about his righteous? Listen to this one. Man, I like this. I will give you, I will bestow upon you a name, a title of honor. This is what God is promising a Persian king a hundred years, even before he steps into the picture. You know what that means? 
a title of honor. It means position. It means influence. It means power. It means that he has a name that when he walks into a room, people go, yes, sir. That he can say, I want this, and people start running to go get it. It's amazing how God said, I will bestow upon him a title of honor. Can I tell you something? When God decides to put his honor and bestow his honor on you, there is no one that can take that away. There is no one that can stand against that. See, listen, friends, I, I, there, there are many people that will seek honor from other people. There are many that will seek honor from other people. I want the president to honor me. I want the governor to honor me. I want all these other people to honor me. And, that's, and, and the problem with it is we live a certain way to try and obtain honor from men. But if we can understand how it is to obtain honor from God, that he says this, you want to obtain honor from me, guess what? You live righteously. You want to obtain honor, and you want me to bestow honor upon your name and give you a title of honor, guess what? You need to serve. Wow. Come on, that's crazy, isn't it? And so instead of us running around like chickens with our head cut off trying to get honor from people, we realize that when God bestows honor and a title of honor upon us, it doesn't matter what we get from other people. All that matters is that God has bestowed something on us, and it's him that positions us. It, it's him that brings us to that place of influence. Why? Because it's an anointing. It's an anointing. Everybody say the Cyrus anointing. Well, let me, let me finish this last one. Are you ready for this? <sighs> Accomplish what God has decreed. He will accomplish what God has decreed. The Cyrus anointing is to be able to accomplish that which God has decreed. Listen to this. A chapter earlier, Isaiah 44. Listen, this is amazing. Isaiah 44, verse 28. Who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and will accomplish all that I please. He will say of Jerusalem, let it be built. And of the temple, let its foundations be laid. That God would develop Cyrus to be a man, even this ungodly king, to have a desire to build God's kingdom. That God would cultivate within Cyrus someone that didn't even know God, someone that had never encountered God until he met Daniel. A desire to build his temple. You know what's sad to me? Can I just, can I be real with you? How is it that God could so put into an ungodly king, an unrighteous king, a heart to want to build the house, but yet we have Christian after Christian after Christian that could care less in building the house of God? And it saddens me. It grieves me. Man, I, and I'm, I'm only a pastor. Can you imagine how God feels going, man, I've put my word in their heart. I've put my spirit in them. I've anointed them. I've called them. And yet they don't even have a passion for my kingdom. I believe that God wants to cultivate within us a passion, just like he did here with, this, with Cyrus, that Cyrus anointing, a passion to build God's kingdom, to accomplish what God has decreed, to fulfill a vision, to fulfill the mission that God has called us to. Can I get an amen? Now listen to this one, last one. I, I promise it's the last one. Someone who raised, was raised up for the benefit of others. This is the Cyrus anointing. Isn't this crazy? Someone that would be raised up for the benefit of others. God didn't raise up Cyrus for Cyrus. As a matter of fact, when Cyrus walked into the scene, do you know what he did? He said, everybody go home. What? He said, I want all of you to disperse. I want you to go over there, you to go over there, go back to your land. I want you, as a matter of fact, I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you the resources you need to go help rebuild your lands. 
Cyrus was not elevated. God didn't elevate Cyrus. The anointing that was upon Cyrus, God did not elevate Cyrus for Cyrus. He elevated Cyrus for Israel, for his people. There is people that God is going to raise up, guess what, for you. So that you can step in. There are people that God's going to raise up. I'm telling you right now, I feel it so strongly in my spirit. There are people that God's going to raise up for this house. That they're going to walk in here and say, I don't know why, I just feel a burden. I want to do something. You don't believe me? Look, there's an anointing that God is going to release tonight in this place. There's a Cyrus anointing that's going to be released. Look, if I didn't believe it, I wouldn't have preached it. Let me throw this out. Are you ready for this? Let, let, me, let me just review. Can we review for one minute? Check this out. Number one, the Cyrus anointing is to be chosen by God and used by God. To have impossible victories. To find hidden treasures. To bestow the title. To be bestow the title of honor. To accomplish what God has decreed. And lastly, to be raised up for others. That's the Cyrus anointing. I think we need to go over it one more time just to make sure you have it. The Cyrus anointing is what? To be chosen and used by God. To have impossible victories. To find hidden treasures. To what? Bestow the title of honor. To accomplish what God has decreed. And lastly, what? To be raised up for others. Whew. What an incredible anointing. The Cyrus anointing. Now I'm telling you tonight, this is what I believe. As I close, I want to I wanna break this down into two sections, two categories. Number one, the category of you need a Cyrus. You may be here and just like Israel needed a Cyrus, you may need a Cyrus. But the other category, the other group of people is you're here tonight and God has called you to be a Cyrus. You see, there's two particular things. Look, I want to I just categorize it in this way. There was a man named Daniel that needed a Cyrus. And there's something that Daniel did to see the Cyrus anointing released upon his people. But then there was a man named Cyrus that walked in that anointing that God released the power to be who God has called him to be. And there were things that he did to walk in that. So tonight I want to just show this to you real quick. Can you guys bear with me for a few more minutes? Check this out. Number one, if you're here and you say, Pastor, I need a Cyrus. This is for you. Check this out. Isaiah 45, verse 13. Isaiah 45, 13. I will raise up Cyrus in my righteousness. I will make all his ways straight. He will rebuild my cities and set my exiles free. But not for a price or reward, says the Lord Almighty. There are some of you here tonight that you say, Pastor, I need freedom, I need release, I need open doors, I need some victory, and God very well could anoint someone to bring forth. It could be your boss, it could be a loved one, it could be a family member, it could be a neighbor, it could be a bum on the side of the road. Can I tell you something that happened to me today? Some of you don't know Pete, but we have a guy here that comes on property every so often. His name is Pete. And uh, years ago, I, I took Pete out to, to lunch and bought him some clothes and tried to hang out with Pete. And it was a little interesting because the very next day he had different clothes on. I was ticked. I spent a lot of money on that dude. Today, I was at Kahala Mall trying to get something. I was running some errands. And I walk out of Kahala Mall, and I'm, I'm on my phone trying to text somebody something. And all of a sudden, I hear, Hey! And I look over, and there's Pete, and he goes, hey, how you doing, Pastor? I was like, hey, Pete, how you doing, buddy? And I realized we never know who God can raise up to be a blessing. 
Daniel, in this moment, here's Israel in captivity. Daniel needed a Cyrus. He needed someone to come step on the scene with an anointing to overthrow and to release. Listen to this. I want you to, can you guys, can you, can I read this to you for a minute? This is from Josephus. Now, Josephus was a very interesting historian. As a matter of fact, he lived in the days of Christ and after and some AD time. And uh, Josephus was an incredible historian that wrote so much about uh, different, different Jewish history. He was a Jewish historian. And he was incredible because it's so detailed on some of the stuff. Incredible detail. But I want to read you just a portion, an insert from Josephus' Antiquities from, uh, on the, the, the story and the history of Cyrus. Listen to this. Thus saith Cyrus, the king, since God Almighty hath appointed me to be king of the... Hab uh, the uh, hold on, I lost my place. This is some small little writing. Let me try it again. Ready? Here we go. Thus saith Cyrus, the king, since God Almighty hath appointed me to be king of the earth, I believe that he is that God which the nation of the Israelites worship. For indeed, this is, this is Cyrus saying this. For indeed, he foretold my name by the prophets. That means someone, I believe possibly it was Daniel, Someone had to come up to Cyrus and say, hey, Cyrus, you want to see something cool? A hundred years ago, something was written about you. Even before you were born, somebody wrote about you. Listen to Cyrus' response from reading the prophet's words about him. This is why I'm convinced that one of the revivals that's going to be made manifest in this season is a prophetic revival. Listen to this. He says this. For indeed he foretold my name by the prophets and that I should build him a house at Jerusalem in the country of Judea. This was known to Cyrus by his reading the book which Isaiah left behind him of his prophecies. For this prophet said that God had spoken thus to him in a secret vision. My will is that Cyrus, whom I have appointed to be king over many and great nations, send back to my people to their own, they send back to my people to their own land and build my temple. This was foretold by Isaiah 130 years before the temple was demolished. Sheesh. Accordingly, when Cyrus read this and admired the divine power and earnest desire. This is not scripture. This isn't Bible. This is written from a historian's perspective of what happened. Accordingly, when Cyrus read this and admired the divine power and earnest desire and an ambition seized upon him to, fill what was so, to fulfill what was so written, so he called for the most eminent Jews that were in Babylon and said to them that he gave them leave to go back to their own country and to rebuild their city, Jerusalem, and the temple of God for that he would be their assistant. Who would be their assistant? Cyrus would actually be their assistant. And that he would write to the rulers and governors that were in the neighborhood of their country, Judea, that they should contribute to them gold and silver for the building of the temple, and besides that, beasts for their sacrifice. In the reading of the word of God in the reading of the prophetic word about Cyrus it gave him a revelation and he began to walk out what the prophetic said it said that he had an ambition to say I want to fulfill everything that is said about me it became proof of the divine power of God and the God of Israel friends can I tell you something what you have stop depending upon your good looks Your moxie, 
to try and produce favor in your life. We have to be dependent upon the person of the Holy Spirit, for it is He who gives revelation. It is He who brings forth divine appointments. It is He who does incredible works that you can't do in the flesh. There's no possible way that in the flesh Cyrus could have done what he did, but because of the word of the Lord. Oh, man, don't become complacent. Do not become complacent, church, in releasing the word of the Lord. I'm not telling you to manipulate, but I'm telling you that there's a word that God is going to put in you that is going to release a Cyrus anointing. See, there was a Cyrus anointing that was released a hundred years before Cyrus even came on the scene. I love Isaiah says, I call him forth. Some of you need to start calling things forth. Can I tell you what Daniel did? I like this. If we want, if you, if you need a Cyrus, let me give this to you right now. You got to do what Daniel did. You know what it is? Number one, you got to continue to declare the word of the Lord. You got to continue to declare the word of the Lord. You cannot become complacent in declaring the word of the Lord. You got to declare the word of the Lord in everything you do. If you're believing God to send forth, and every single morning we pray, God, you're going to bring 30,000 plus into this house every single week. You say, well, pastor, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it's nothing compared to what we truly need to fulfill what God's called us to do. Why do you do that, pastor? Because I'm declaring the word of the Lord. Just as Daniel declared the word of the Lord continued in that 70 years, he continued to declare the word of the Lord as they were in captivity. I declare over and over the word of the Lord. Continue to believe and remain steadfast. Daniel didn't waver in his commitment. He said, I'm going to be where God called me to be. I see too many people get derailed because of time. Well, it didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen. It didn't happen when I wanted it to happen. And they get derailed. you got to be like Daniel and just stay. If you need a, look, if you need a Cyrus, stay where God called you. Don't be quick to leave every time problems come. Because it could be even in the midst of that dysfunction that God reveals your Cyrus. Even in the midst of your greatest need that God will reveal your Cyrus. So that means you must be in divine alignment. Be in the right place at the right time. Isn't that awesome? You know what I loved about Daniel's commitment? Is he prayed and prayed and prayed and believed God. And he was even thrown in a lion's den for praying and believing God, but he didn't quit. Even when it gets hard, if you need a Cyrus, you need the Cyrus anointing to be released in your life, you got to pray, you got to declare, you got to remain steadfast, and you got to stay in alignment. Amen? But let me close with this you may be a Cyrus. You may be here tonight and you say, you know what? God's called me to be a Cyrus. That's an incredible call, can I tell you right now? And this is what it means. If you want to be a Cyrus, number one, you got to walk according to your calling. Stop trying to be somebody you ain't. Don't try and be a preacher like me if God's called you to be a businessman. It's okay. Not everybody's called to this. Trust me. Sometimes you don't. Trust me. I don't even want to be called to this sometimes. Be called to what God's called you to. The Cyrus anointing could only be released on Cyrus's life if he was doing what God called him to do. And that was to be king. Don't try and be something you're not. Be who God made you to be and be the best at it. Conquer. Be victorious. Come on. If God's called you to be a cafe owner, a chef, if he's called you to be a car salesman, if he's called you to be an insurance salesman, if he's called you to be a, a great wife and a mother, come on, somebody. Be the best. Conquer. Conquer those two-year-olds in the name of Jesus. That was a joke. Second thing we see, if you want to be a Cyrus, you want to have the Cyrus anointing, not only do you got to be who God made you to be, 
You have to walk in your calling. You have to walk in divine power. Cyrus actually walked in divine power. He was able to do things that a normal person could not do. He was able to assemble an army and have victories that a normal king could not. He conquered the then known world. Let me tell you something. He did something incredible. And it took divine power and the hand of God was upon it. And if, God is, if God's hand could be on an unrighteous king, how much more can God's hand be on you to conquer? How much more can you walk in his divine power? If you want to be a Cyrus, it, it's not going to happen by, by you just standing there and being like, hey, I'm cool. I'm gonna, you got to have an anointing. You got to have a prayer life. You got to pray in the Holy Ghost. And you got to have some faith to exercise and activate the calling of God on your life. And lastly, as I close, if you want to walk in that Cyrus anointing, you got to live to establish God's kingdom, not your own. Realize that you are called and empowered to affect something greater than yourself. I want to have that same heart. I, I love God. And I, as the worship team comes, I want to have the same heart as Cyrus. I want to do something that's greater than just me. I don't want to build something that when I'm, I'm gone, people are gone too. I want to build something that outlasts me and my children and their children. Something that's eternal. Something that's greater than just my, my paycheck and my house and my car. I want to live beyond myself. I want to live for his kingdom. And if, un, if an ungodly king can do that and have that passion, how much more should we as the people of God have, an, have a passion to do something for his kingdom and for his glory? Tonight, you may be a Daniel. And you may say, hey, I need a Cyrus in my life. Keep praying. Keep declaring. Remain steadfast. Maybe tonight you say, Pastor, I feel called to walk in that Cyrus anointing. Good. Get in your lane. Be who God's called you and created you to be. Walk in the power. And live a life greater than yourself. Live for something greater than yourself.